PC Casual Gaming Dad here uh, today. Huh, stream after stream after stream. Uh, we got a surprise. We got a Diablo 4 quarterly update, and I'm excited about it. Um, I've glanced it over uh, for a little bit, but I want to like read it a little bit more in detail uh, and touch base on it. And I mean, I'm super excited about this game. I'm going to be playing the living crap out of this game. God willing, it's good and whatnot. It looks pretty good so far, but they do talk about some pretty important things that I think a lot of people are have their concerns about, given the recent Diablo Immortal fiasco. Um, and I'll talk about some of my concerns and my thoughts on it, but uh, let's go over it. So today we have the welcome to the third Diablo 4 quarterly update of 2022. We know that there's already an internal uh, testing going on right now, so we're Many, many people are speculating we're going to get a beta by the end of the year. There seems to be moving in that direction. Man, I would just kill to get into that. But anyways, uh, so last time they talked about the Necromancer. So you can take a look at that. Let me just take a quick peek here. June 13th. Wow. Two months later. I wasn't Honestly, I wasn't expecting this till next month. That is crazy. You know, maybe they were a little... A little bit late on the last one, but wow, that is fantastic, right? So they're going to be talking about some things that happens uh, after the game ships, right? So, which I think is really great. They're going to talk about things like seasons, monetization. That's a big one. That's the big boy right there, right? Ongoing content and whatnot. So let's go over that. I'm not going to read it all in detail. I will put a link to this when this goes on YouTube in the video description so you can take a look. Uh, we have the game director just doing his little introductions and whatnot and talking a lot about the you know the, the cosmetic shop there's going to be an optional season pass that supports and whatnot uh, i've got some very mixed feelings about it but anyways we'll see what happens okay let's start with the seasons hello heroes of sanctuary my name is joe pipiora i think the associate game director responsible for game systems in our live service today. I finally get to talk about our high-level plans for Diablo 4's seasonal content updates. We're in the exciting position of delivering the high-quality quarterly releases Diablo 4 deserves. That's right. As our game director, Joe Shelley and are pursuing a seasonal reset structure for our live game, they're looking to be pretty ambitious. They're looking at four times a year, so that means every three months. Uh, it's definitely borderline too fast. Three to four months, it's kind of hard to tell which one's better, but Diablo is a game about choice and possibility. You feel it is at its best when you get a clean slate to start from a season, picking a class, customizing your build, chasing down items. I kind of I kind of have to agree it is pretty exciting when we do that, so you know. Okay, so new content, right? We think it's important that players that see the game change and is changing in meaningful ways. Let's take a quick peek at this. Ooh. I like, I like, what can I say? Okay, each season will be released with a fresh new gameplay feature. Sounds kind of like, uh, you know, <laughs> not the vector, anybody, right? But, um, hey, don't try to fix what ain't broken, right? New gameplay feature in Questline introduces new challenges, mysteries, and possibilities into the level up experience. This is something players should begin to experience before the end of their first hour of gameplay. That's really interesting. They want it to be something that impacts your gameplay right from the get-go. It's not going to simply be an end-game thing. And I, I do like that approach, actually. One of the benefits of our seal direction is that it enables fun new ways to play through the character's progression. Each season's new questline will reveal more of the world of Sanctuary and your character's place in it. Okay, interesting. Hmm. There's a lot of ways to interpret that. Here we get an opportunity to introduce new characters or visit old ones are exploring the lore and the content. Refreshing the meta. So here we have what appears to be those points, right? We've got stats, right? All the usual stats. Glyphs. Not really sure exactly what these are. Looks like you equip them. Maybe they add to your stats when you put them in a certain way. Okay, interesting. It's a vast game. We want to ensure that we're keeping existing content and features in a place where they remain fun and challenging to participate in. To that end, we will always be evaluating the current state of the game. I just threw that word in there. Uh, to regularly revitalize older stomping grounds. 
One clear example here is looking at the relative balance between classes. Okay, so they're just talking about we're going to keep up to date on that. We're going to look for feedback. We're not going to just let things be the best of all the time. There's going to be tuning. That makes sense. There should be, right? We will also constantly, uh, we will also be constantly adding new legendary and unique items, paragon boards, glyphs, and more that will continue to refresh the meta and create new build opportunities. I think new build opportunities to me is more important than that. Just giving us more ways to play, I think will be more exciting, right? Improving the game. With each season, we'll be looking into ways to simply improve the player experience as a live product. So, let's stop here for a second. Let's discuss the elephant in the room, right, before we get on to monetization and that sort of thing. This is a live product. So, what's the difference between a live product and something like you buy like a single player and just play it through, you pay a one-time price, maybe there's DLC added right later or something, but let's say you just buy a game, $60, $70 game, right? Okay, you play through the game, you get the experience. As a live product, right, that means they're gonna have servers, right? They're gonna be adding new content, right? They're going to be having a development team that works on keeping the game up to date, refreshing the meta, creating seasonal ideas, right? That costs money, right? It's not free. So I think what we have to come to accept, and this may not be a person's cup of tea, right? This is a live game. It's gonna be having content regularly updated. So they do have to have some way to generate consistent mon monetary flow, right? In order to pay said developers, right? for us to have those products, you know. I personally don't have a problem with it because uh, they are optional, right? I don't have a problem with things like cosmetics and whatnot. The battle pass, it's a little bit different. When we get to that, I'll talk about that, but this is a live product, so it's not the same thing. Okay. Uh, we intend to hold Diablo 4 to an exceedingly high standard. We are here to build a live game that we can be proud of. And the best way to do that is by engaging our players directly. So based on feedback we receive, the team will identify quality of life features. So this is all nice and dandy. I hope they follow through on it personally uh, because there's lots of feedback in a game like Diablo 2 and Diablo 3, for example, that, again, I, I really doubt that a lot of their big teams were on those games. Uh, Especially Diablo 3 felt like it was just really left to the wayside for a while, which is why I stopped playing it a few years ago. But nonetheless, you know, um, we'll see. They're talking about, hey, we're going to work on things. So let's uh, see how it goes, right? Live events. Sanctuary is a living world filled with people, creatures, and factions striving to meet their own ends. Attentive players should be on the lookout for new live events that will crop up each season. An example of a live event might be the warning of an impending invasion of the drowned, which may last a weekend, or the arrival of a strange peddler amidst the crags of the dry steppes. These events provide gateways to new adventures and rewards. Season Journey. So, if you played Diablo 3, you'll probably be familiar with this sort of thing. From what I can tell, this is a little bit different. There's the same concept of having a journey or objectives. You can see that here, that there are chapters, right? We have seven chapters worth, and then there's an events tab. And there's, you know, little rewards. It looks like they're cosmetics that you get, as well as some of this currency. They're calling it their premium currency. And the premium currency can be used to purchase cosmetics from the shop. So I don't have a problem with the cosmetics, right? I think it's cool. I, I think as long as there's ways to earn cosmetics outside of that, I'm okay with it. Path of Exile, for example, there wasn't. You look like complete ass. Let's just put that out there. Uh, unless you spent money, then you looked amazing. So I think it's nice that we get some currency. We can use that to potentially save up and purchase something. Obviously, if you don't want to wait, you don't have to, or money's not a thing for you, you can just buy it, right? They'll talk a little bit more about that as we get down. So... Uh, along with our major season releases, we will see the return of the season journey. Players are pushed to explore Sanctuary anew, earning limited time rewards with each chapter the season journey is completed. I do like those. Sometimes those little cosmetics like they had here can be nice to have. They're a little something that shows that you participate in a journey, right, in a season. 
Come to the season journey is quite a feat with the final step demanding the character overcome an extremely difficult encounter with an especially deadly foe. Okay, so it should be challenging. With future season journeys, we are regularly adding pinnacle level difficulty chances for players to complete, proving their worth, and earning unique cosmetic rewards beside. Like that. Fine with it. Like Diablo 3, the season journey is free for all players. I should have been doing that this whole time. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Completing season journey objectives also grants progress toward the season pass. Uh, a new feature with a battle style progression that advances alongside the season journey, enabling players to earn even more rewards just by playing. I'm getting Diablo Immortal vibes. Didn't really like that too much, right? Uh, the season pass is both free reward cosmetics, premium currency, and gameplay boosts, and paid rewards, cosmetics, and premium currency only. So what is this? Gameplay boost. I want to know what that is. What does that mean? Okay. Season pass. Keegan Clark, director of the product for Diablo 4. We're discussing monetization. I feel for this guy. He's got the hardest job in the world in this game. Uh, full price game with a cosmetic shop and season pass. None of which provides any pay for power options. Spoiler alert. He highlights that fact many times. So they really, really want to emphasize. There's not going to be a pay for power. So... I have to believe that they're not going to say this a good dozen times in this article and plan to have pay for power. Okay, so I'm going to assume there's no pay to win. Okay, they've said it many, many times, but again, cautiously optimistic, right? Our goal in designing our in game purchase is we want to create beautiful things which add value to players' experience. See, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with beautiful things. The scale is much more ambitious than we've done in the past of Diablo 3, which a large development team dedicated to seasons after launch will be supported by an army of developers for years to come. Hey, that sounds great. With all the exciting plans we have for scenes, we want them to be enjoyed by everyone regardless of whether they buy anything from the shop. I'm grateful for the opportunity to finally share more with the community of our live service model. Seasons will add all new gameplay, quests, challenges, meta changes, and quality of life improvements. The season pass recognizes players' dedication with greater rewards and lockies you play more throughout the season. There'll be a single track of rewards with free tiers that are unlocked just by playing the game and leveling, and premium tiers that provide no in-game power advantage over other players. The free tiers of the pass will provide gameplay boosts to all players. Why are we getting gameplay boosts if if it's free for everybody? See, that's the part I don't understand. It's, if, if everyone gets a gameplay boost, then it's like no one's getting one. It just seems kind of silly, this artificial reward system just for logging in. It resembles like gotcha mechanics. I don't really care for those, you know. Uh, that's just me personally. Uh, things which make the journey of leveling up a fresh seasonal character faster and more streamlined. Okay, so I'll comment on that in a minute. In contrast, the premium tier rewards are focused on aesthetics. Okay, providing a huge value in the form of cosmetics and premium currency. So lots of aesthetics, plus more premium currency, which yields more aesthetics. Okay. Men the words embody the seasonal theme of when players show up their participation that season. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about what you could expect. Free and premium. Throughout the past, players can earn a variety of rewards for free just by playing. At any point during the season, players can purchase the premium pass to unlock the ability to earn premium board tiers, contain seasonally themed stuff. So basically get Limited time stuff. Yes, we know how that works. Uh, like the shop, uh, these don't affect gameplay. Additionally, certain cosmetic types are exclusive to the season pass. Okay, so there might be certain things you can only get if you do the season pass. It's a certain... Uh, it reminds me of like store mounts that you can't get in the game or earn the game some way. Okay. Uh, not a fan of that. Uh, players can spend currency on cosmetics offered in the shop with a premium currency. Okay. All right. Uh, awards free season boosts. Boosts accelerate players' progress for the duration of the season. For example, a season boost might accelerate EXP or to make leveling multiple characters. Okay. So this I'm okay with, right? So let's say I level up a whole character from 1 to 50. I think is that the cap, right? 50. Then I make another character... And I'm able to level that up a little bit faster, right? It's kind of like making alts, like in a game, right? Mm. I think I'm okay with that conceptually. I don't know about in practice. Well, for this kind of game, I'm not sure. But maybe. Maybe, I think. Uh, okay, I, I'll, we'll see. 
I'll, I'll, I gotta chew on that a little bit more. Because they affect gameplay, season boosts are free for all players. We want to be clear that players can't unlock season boosts more quickly through purchases. Good. There's no way to unlock more boosts or boosts at a faster pace by spending money. Good. Okay. That's good. That's important. Purchase tiers, but they won't speed up getting season boosts. Players can upgrade season boosts. Can't upgrade season boosts just by purchasing tiers, because they'll also have to earn level milestones to apply them. All of the tier rewards can be unlocked instantly by purchasing tiers. In other words, there's no way to shortcut getting season boosts by buying tiers. They must be earned. All right, fair enough. Season pass progression. While any playstyle can progress through the season pass, min maxers can focus on season journey objectives to advance more quickly. Sure. Okay, the shop. The way we approach design the shop and the cosmetic within. It was by thinking about the experience we want players to have. We want buying things to feel good before, during, and after purchase. So if players choose to buy something, it should be because they want to, not because they feel they have to. Thank you. Absolutely. That's, you think that'd be obvious, but it should also be clear to players exactly what they're getting before they choose to buy with no unpleasant surprises. Okay. The shop's cosmetic build on top of the foundation of a huge variety of trend from weapons and armor players will find in-game. It's also important to us that the shop is grounded within Diablo's world so our cosmetics are holistic fantasies. The individual commands of which can be mixed and matched with trans mods from other armors. Thank you for that. Okay, so let's take a look here. Right. So we have some examples of these are featured, right? Different things. That looks pretty cool. Okay. Let's talk about what players can expect. The shop sells cosmetics for premium currency. Cosmetics give players even more options to customize the visual appearance of their characters. Nothing offered in the shop grants a direct or indirect gameplay advantage. So while many of these may look like power of script, they have no in-game stats. Okay. So here's the Wraith Lord. This definitely looks very cool. Their souls answer my call. Some necromancers explore beyond the body, blood, and bones of the dead. Skill necromancer metal and spirit put in energy to use as well. So you get the bundle. It looks like it comes with all of these things. I wonder if you could just buy individual pieces. Hmm. I wonder, because there's the bundle. Be kind of cool if you just had enough currency and like, oh, I can work on a piece at a time. I can get the head, the armor. And then that way you can mix and match different pieces, right? Transmogs, that would be cool. Shop is optional. I'm telling you, they really want to emphasize that. Players can preserve all core and seasonal gameplay features without spending money. Our goal is for players to enjoy going to the shop, buy something when it catches their fancy, walk away happy. Yeah, just like in real life, right? Shop is transparent. It's important for players to know exactly what, they're, what to expect for making a purchase. We built preview function on enables players to closely examine every detail of the cosmetic on their own characters. So take a look. Preview character, right? So you can see exactly what it's going to look like. And it shows supported classes, so it's for those classes. Okay. Messing and cosmetics aren't exclusive to the shop. Diablo 4 will ship with hundreds of transmogs unlockable from drops in game, including dozens of armor sets of the highest visual quality. The, there are incredible pieces, unique and legendary quality items for players to find without ever going to the shop. The shop offers more diversity of choices, not systematically better ones so this is this is the problem that i had with path of exile was you just look like ass right so this is probably what you find in game this is probably what you buy looks a little bit cleaner a little bit nicer right okay pretty nice okay still looks pretty cool i might like this one more it's a little bit more gross but a little bit cleaner fancier right here, this looks pretty cool. This also looks pretty good. So stuff you can find in game. Okay, good. That's that's good. That's good to know. Armor Transmog, useful on all characters of that class. So it's not you buy it, it's not just for one character and you have to go and buy it again. That makes perfect sense, right? Whereas, for example, this Transmog is probably not going to work on every class. It may just work on just the Barbarian, Necro, Rogue, etc. Excuse me. Okay. Something players love, look forward to, and appreciate being part of the game. Create new ways for players to explore, express themselves, and never provide advantages in-game. Told you they beat it to death. 
Dyers will experience all the fun of season whether they spend anything or not. We we intend to continue our dialogue with players from the shop in season pass. And we'll always listen and see how the community's feedback about it. Okay. Many years to come. Loving, evolving world. Wrapping up this quarterly update blog, we want players to take comfort in knowing Diablo 4 will continue to evolve its offerings post-launch, the introduction of new seasons alongside live events. I like the live events. They, they mentioned somewhere in here, I must have missed it or ran past it, it was uh, they're going to sometimes have events that are just for like a weekend or just for a week or something. And I, I kind of like that. I think that's kind of cool, you know, just little things that pop up here and there, right? And uh, the returning season journey work in tandem breathe life in the game. Can't wait for you to explore these systems in the future. Hopefully the very near future. Well, we know it's coming next year. Okay, so overall thoughts, right? Uh, I'm glad that they took the time to talk about the monumental-sized elephant in the room. After Diablo Mortal, granted that game was made in collaboration with another company that's pretty notorious for these sorts of things, you know. I think a lot of people were very genuinely concerned about Diablo 4. As you can see, this is they're definitely treating this as a different game, okay? They're both live games. One is an MMO, one's not. Uh, one was designed with those things, those gotcha-like mechanics and pay-to-win features right from the get-go. Like, that's it's obvious, you know? They act like it wasn't, but it was, you know? And it's really unfortunate because Diablo Mortal could have been a fun game. Uh, I tried it. I got to, like, level 53 or 54. I didn't get to level cap. I just got tired of it. I got sick of... Just being taunted every time I turn in the game. Here, check your login bonus. Check this. Why don't you purchase this? Look at this. You're missing out on that. Like, I hated it so much, honestly. Like, I will never support that game. This looks good, though, from what I can see. Uh, I want a game I pay for. I want content update. I'm willing to pay for that. Would I have rather had a subscription? Kind of like an MMO? Versus a battle pass, probably. It's similar in some ways and less so in others. But uh, I think the subscription, I've paid for games like that and I'm fine with it. I just don't like the idea of a, of a battle pass because it just it just kind of like encourages you to spend more. Uh, there's not like a just flat amount, you know, where I get an expectation. I think... A subscription with a cash, uh, a cosmetic shop would have been the best. That's what I would have personally liked. Uh, I know some people who straight up say they love the battle pass. They love that sort of thing. So, I mean, I, I don't really know. It's it's really a, everyone's gonna have differing opinions, but that's what I think. But overall, I think that this is this is more positive than negative. I have some concerns. We'll see how some things are implemented. But I'm cautiously optimistic, okay? As, as we get closer to beta, closer to release, I'll be covering this more, I'll be playing this. I really, I want this to be a game that I play for a long time, I really do. I, I really want this to be like my primary game. I just, I love the world of Diablo and I'm gonna have a lot of fun playing it. So I'm looking forward to it, I'm excited. And let's hope for the best, right? All right, well. Thanks so much for joining me for this impromptu stream, and I'll see you next time. Slay in hell.